TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind me, you see a little warning screen. I don't know what this video holds for us, but you see it. Twitch.com is where you can catch live streams, previous lives, and be ready for future lives. The username is at the bottom of the screen. And we do got Patreon where we post five days a week. That's stuff we cannot watch on YouTube. Talk to me. This is uh, a Troubled Land Archive. Killer Secrets Spotlight 2024. The Dirty War. Loyalist Collisions with the State. Okay. This one I got to pay attention to, huh? I pay attention to them all, but like, I got to, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit lever, leather level of concentration here. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. I mean, like, pay attention, like, can't even look at the chat, pay attention. This is that type of video. Okay, salute. Neither do I. UK's Supreme Court has been asked to rule on an extraordinary dispute. Coroner's judges and the chief constable of the PSNI think it's time to tell some of the trouble's deepest secrets. Nobody who commits murders should be protected. The government says it's too dangerous to open up. Everybody's under obligations you know, not to put people in harm's way. Are you confident? that killers aren't being protected. No, I can't comment on that. So what secrets are still hidden? We reveal new information from one of the conflict's darkest episodes. How were you going to kill them? Get out of the car and open up when I came. Why didn't you go through with it? It just kept getting put back and then I was who, going... Who was putting it back? Billy was putting it back. Okay. I'm surrounded in the photograph by my three brothers and my dad. It's a precious memento of Jared and Rory and us all together when we were just carefree and living a life where we didn't know that everything was going on. Yeah, it's the last photograph, the last time that I ever probably was speaking to my two brothers when they were alive, you know. Moments after this birthday photograph was taken in October 1993, Liam Kearns and his parents left their home in Bleary, County Down, for the evening. Eleven-year-old Roisin was playing with her presents when loyalist gunmen smashed through the back door, opening fire and killing her big brothers, Rory and Jared, who were watching television. I just froze at the table. And she was 11, and her big brothers were how old? Like, did they, like, old as in... And one of them rushes into the living room and another one puts his finger 
up to his mouth and looks at me. Two masked gunmen went in through the back door, walked past an 11-year-old girl in the kitchen, then shot both her brothers. Over 30 years later, the family are still traumatized by the murders. Completely destroyed us. I was living in an empty shell. Yeah, I was going about living day-to-day -day life, but it's, it's really just an act, because inside you feel completely, like, completely numb. How old were the brothers? Were they like teenagers, like 17, 18, 19? Like, it, does, it doesn't matter, but like... But really only in wow. the last few years, you know, in my early to mid-30s, that I feel like I'm starting to feel more like living normal, a normal life. Liam is the only surviving son. He's rarely spoken publicly. It's a void in my life. It'll never be, it'll never be fixed. It'll, it'll never be replaced in my life. A part of your soul goes. The only thing we have left is left their memories. Why, why us? That never leaves you on a daily basis. From the minute you wake up to the minute you close your eyes. In 2019, the Kearns finally got their first breakthrough when former UVF gunman Lawrence McGuire started telling his secrets to Spotlight in a series coinciding with the 50th anniversary of the Troubles. I was prepared to kill from the start, so I was, because I seen it was the only way forward. He revealed that he was part of a UVF gang that had planned to kill the three Kearns brothers a year before Rory and Gerard were murdered. Oh, why? We were on our way out to do the Kearns, and we got a call over the radio to say to abort. There was a helicopter in the sky just above them. So we just turned the car around. Maguire also said the plan to kill the Cairns had come from two prominent leaders of the Mid-Ulster UVF, okay. Robin Jackson and Billy Wright. But well, who are the Cairns? Like, why? Robin was the main one, and that's the first time I'd met the fella. He was the man that was running it that night. Him and Wright done most of the talking. So your instructions were that if you went to the Cairns house in Blairy, you were to kill any male yeah. that you saw in the house? Yeah. So if the third brother, if he had been there, you'd have killed? He would have been killed as well. And if Eugene, the father, had been there? He would have been done too. So he would. Lawrence McGuire said Billy Wright was getting targeting information to set up murders directly from police. All intelligence come from Wright. Wow. And where did he tell you he was getting his intelligence from? From police officers that were working with him. Who are these police? Who were the security that was passing this intelligence? And why are they not in the dock? And that's the, where we need to get to. In County Tyrone, Bernie McCurney is also asking those questions. What are they hiding? Or what is the state not wanting people to find out? I think I've been left in limbo. Um, what do I do now? In January 1992, Bernie's husband, Kevin, was shot along with his uncle, Jack, in the family butcher's shop. Both died from their injuries. They had family members in the IRA, but neither was involved themselves. Nine months later... Ah, OK. They wanted the whole bloodline, whoever's affiliated with anything that opposes what they got going on. They was, that's crazy. The young widow discovered the bodies of her parents. The bodies of Charles and Teresa Fox were discovered at their isolated cottage shortly before nine o'clock this morning. That's messed up. What is it you want, Bernie? I want 
justice, I want accountability, I want uh, people named, I want their names in black and white in the media, I just, yeah, that people say, yes, this is how Kevin and Jack and Mummy and Daddy were killed. In 2019, Lawrence Maguire started to reveal details about those murders for which he was jailed to spotlight. It was just the mother and father there. She had sort of had a run for the gun. She tried to grab the gun and... You uh, still killed her? Uh, well, she, she still died, like. Wait, so he was the... For three decades, there had been no inquests into the McCurney and Fox murders. Finally, last year, that changed, and the inquest process started to unravel some of the secrets around the killings. In his interview with us, Lawrence McGuire named Billy Wright as the man who directed killings in Mid-Ulster. Inquest documents have now confirmed Robin Jackson also played a central role in the murders of both Bernie McCurney's husband and her parents. Gavin Booth is the McCurney and Fox family solicitor. Robin Jackson was named in the McCurney murders. Robin Jackson was also named as being there at the Fox murders. Wright and Jackson are both dead, but a lawyer in an inquest hearing said a living person was also involved. Alan Oliver, photographed in the early 1990s with Billy Wright, we tried to question him five years ago about his alleged involvement in UVF murders. Mr. Oliver, my name's Mandy McCauley. I'm from the BBC. I want to ask you about a series of murders that were carried out across Mid-Ulster. You have been connected by multiple sources, by intelligence to a series of mul multiple murders across Mid-Ulster. Did you murder these people, Mr. Oliver? Why won't you talk to us? Are you being protected? Alan Oliver was named by the suspects who were convicted in relation to these murders, and Alan Oliver is named. There really be some crazy stuff going on over here. Like this, don't even like every time I listen, watch something about the uh, about this place, about this piece of the world. It's shocking. It doesn't even sound real. Like, how is this happening? As being a key player in the Mid-Ulster UVF. He was invited to come to the inquest. Time and time again, the coroner's service were directly contacting him to ask him to come to give witness evidence. No representative on behalf of Alan Oliver ever appeared. We wrote to Mr. Oliver, asking him if he had any response to being named in the inquest. A solicitor replied, saying that based on his knowledge of the inquest documents, he believed we had identified the wrong person. It wasn't just the names of suspects that were coming up. The inquests also uncovered evidence of a familiar pattern, that members of the security forces had been helping the Mid-Ulster UVF pick its targets. Robin Jackson received a... Y'all you, you, remember that movie? Um, what is the movie? Uh... I don't know if y'all gonna remember it. Yeah, he's a British actor. Dude that was going to work every day and then he like he would take the pills to slow down. He thought he was having anxiety attacks. Um and then he the dude that could shoot and throw the bullet around the corner. Y'all remember that movie? This is like that. But like like as, as and I mean that like as far as remember the like the twine would pick out who who would uh who would have to be eliminated and things of that not and Morgan Freeman but but Morgan Freeman started choosing it instead like they like these is like do movies get their stuff from this direct intelligence from the UDR like I'm, I be tying stuff together that's so far fetched but this is what is reminding me of this stuff we seen intelligence Receive direct intelligence from Wanted. the UDR. Yeah. We seen intelligence documents from the PSNI, MOD, and security services. These documents showed how they were aware that Billy Wright was centrally receiving information directly from members of the RUC. Billy Wright was given direct intelligence locations, victims' names, targets, in order to carry out murder. 
This is absolutely astonishing that this was allowed to happen. And not only that, we know that he was never prosecuted for it. But at the end of April, the McCurney and Fox inquests and a series of others stalled against the government's refusal to release some information about the killings on the grounds of national security. The coroners in those inquests were allowed to see the secret information. But when they proposed... I like this lady. I like how she pronounces words. Like she's really putting like, she's not playing. ...releasing public summaries. The government went to court to try to stop them. Over the years, the state agents have been protected. Every, uh, the police in MI5, they're protecting them, but nobody ever protects my loved ones. And I do get emotional at times, and I hate it, because I try to be a strong person, but it has been hard. Knowing that if Kevin had got the protection that the state agents got, he could be living the day. Getting access to information hampered the investigations of Baroness Nula O'Lone when she examined cases involving state collusion as police ombudsman. She's critical of the government's latest action. I think it's absolutely appalling. I want to say I'm not surprised by the government's involvement in anything. They can always justify it, though, to themselves. Same time as those people, the Secretary of State, are telling us they want people to get information recovery they have repeatedly refused to allow the NIO and MI5 to allow material to be released. So what are the secrets of the Mid-Ulster UVF that have yet to emerge? You're about to see parts of Lawrence Maguire's interview that we did not broadcast in 2019. Since then, information coming from the inquests and other sources have highlighted the significance of what he told us. First, while the Mid-Ulster UVF was conducting a campaign that killed pensioners and teenagers, according to Lawrence Maguire, Billy Wright was reluctant to attack a man suspected of being a senior figure in the IRA. We mentioned various targets tell him and it was always no leave it leave it let, let me do the targeting you know I always said no and can you tell me who they were well Colin Duffy was one of them in the 90s Colin Duffy was alleged to be one of the most senior Republicans in North Armagh to me that was like the cream of the crop and on a couple of occasions I could have took him right down and was told, no, I wasn't to touch him. Maguire believed he had the perfect opportunity to kill Duffy on one of his regular visits to a relative in the Mays prison. Sometimes he was getting the bus to the end of the half town road and walking up to the prison. And that's a question. So he was outside lacking. You had plenty of opportunity. Why was he on the bus as a senior member of that road? You know, it wouldn't have been a problem. I went there, right, and we talked about it, and he just said, no, leave it. So I used to think, well, he doesn't want guys of that calibre taken out because... Is that... Wait. To me, that doesn't want guy Is that... No. ...of that calibre taken out because, to me, they're going to target him. We wrote to Colin Duffy to ask if he was a member of the IRA and if he recognised the information in Maguire's account. He did not respond. Yeah, I don't, I... But there was another episode, one of the murkiest of the troubles involving members of the IRA that made Lawrence Maguire wonder if Wright had another secret motivation when deciding who lived and who died. In early 1992, not long after the McCurney killings, Maguire says Billy Wright gave him the names of three targets he wanted put under close surveillance. Wright told him the men were active IRA members from the Portadown area. It was Billy put me on to them, so it was. So he told you to start Sorry. following them? Yep. Maguire says he spent months tracking the men until he finally made a breakthrough. 
Lawrence McGuire worked out that the three IRA men would regularly travel in separate cars from the Portadown area to a secluded corner of a car park in Peatlands Park near Dungannon. Maguire brought us to the exact spot he'd chosen to murder the three IRA members, Aidan Stars, John Dignam and Gregory Burns. This is where I used to see Aidan Stars, John Dignam and Gregory Burns used to come here once a week and they used to sit in the car and talk. And they were potential targets for me. So you used to follow them every week to this car park? I used to just come up here and they would have come in usually when I was here. And what did they do? Were they just...? They just used to sit and talk in the car and I was just checking that they were coming every week at the same time. And I was going to take the three of them out in the car park up here. But I knew it would only take a few minutes to get them. Like, as soon as they'd be here, I could have been out and had it done and away again. You say that so... Buddy, wow. This, this dude right here? Stone cold. Matter of factly. Uh, they were just targets, legitimate targets. You say that at that time you were picked up by the police. What happened? Uh, they took me in for question and kept me for about five days and they were asking me what I was doing in Peatlands Park that I'd been spotted in it quite regular. It made me wonder like how were they watching me or were they watching maybe the three boys I was watching or was there more to it? At that time Burns, Dignam and Stars were themselves covering up a killing. A year earlier the men had been involved in the murder of 26 year old Margaret Perry a civil servant from Portadown, strangled and beaten to death and buried in a shallow grave, allegedly killed because she had learned Burns was an informer. Mm. By the time they were meeting in Peatlands Park, all three were believed to be working for the police and security services. But in May 1992, Lawrence Maguire knew none of that. As far as he was concerned, he had three IRA members in his sights. You had three informants in your sight. How were you going to kill them? Just get out of the car and open up one AK on them. If you were ready to kill them, why didn't you go through with it? It just kept getting put back and then I was who, going... Who was putting it back? This dude is a certified killer. You could like see it in his eye. He ain't making no facial expression. Bro, that's not the, the legitimate same face the entire time he's talked. Billy was putting it back. After months spent waiting for Billy Wright to sign off on the murders, Maguire says he went away on holiday at the end of June. Just days later, he heard the news that the naked bodies of Dignam, Stars and Burns had been found dumped on remote border country roads, murdered by the IRA. For snitching, they must have found out that they had, yeah, they had found out that they were informants, right? The IRA said they had killed all three for being informers and for the murder of Margaret Perry. They claimed the security services knew about her murder and had given the men immunity from prosecution in exchange for information about IRA members and arms dumps. Oh, wow. At the same time, Lawrence McGuire was waiting to kill them. Do you think it was strange that That's Billy Wright kept putting it off? The scenario is crazy. Is that then this is true, right? Yes, at the time, I thought there was something strange about it, and when I look back now, it... So they have found out that they emmed the lady, and for immunity, y'all had to give up some information. But they... But the IRA had found out about it. It seemed there was a lot of strange things about it. He just kept putting it back and back all the time. 
It may be that Billy Wright was being cautious because police had seen and questioned Lawrence Maguire. But another possibility has to be that the plan to kill the IRA man was stopped because they were valuable agents of the state. This raises a crucial question. Was one killer, Billy Wright, trying to protect three other killers because they were all intelligence assets? I think we know that Billy Wright was an informant. So why did he have his operative out following these men whom he knew to be senior IRA men, who turned out also to have been informing? He knew they were senior IRA men. Was he making sure they were safe? I don't know what it was. Tommy McCurney is a former IRA member who was jailed for the murder of a UDR soldier. He's waiting to hear the secret intelligence summary around his brother Kevin's murder. We showed him what Lawrence McGuire said. What do you make of that clip? It's astonishing. Astonishing that uh, it was happening. Billy Wright and the Portadown or Mid Ulster UVF had no hesitation or reluctance to kill uh, totally innocent civilians, elderly, young, female, and then puts a ban on the shooting of three men who he obviously believed were members of the IRA. So it begs the question then were they being protected? And if he was an agent, was he acting on his orders to hold, hold back, to stall, to prevent Lawrence McGuire operating against them? He had been following them for three months. Billy Wright said no. He leaves the country and the IRA murders him. This is extraordinary. It's an extraordinary coincidence. Coincidences don't happen like that. It wasn't just Maguire who began to question Wright's motives. He says the UVF leadership later ordered Mid-Ulster gang members to Belfast, part of an internal investigation, to find out if Wright was an informer. What kind of questions were they asking? Just anything that was what he was up to, what he'd done, sort of, had we any suspicions? Did anything seem out of place? Suspicions about what? About what he was doing and, you know, and some of the jobs would, that we'd actually carried out. And, I mean, we just answered what we could. And I think it's, it came to the light that he was definitely working for somebody else. Who? Well, as I said, I just call it the crown. And this is why they got issues today. This is why they want separation now. The introduction now. of the Legacy Act at the start of May means it's unlikely that there will ever be any further public hearings into cases like the murders of the Foxes and the McCurneys. But they shushed them is crazy. You hear that? They in, what, what did they introduce? Of May means it's unlike the introduction of the Legacy Act at the start of May. The Legacy means it's Act. unlikely that there will ever be any further public hearings into cases like the murders of the Foxes and the McCurneys. But questions remain about the roles of any state agents in those murders meaning much hinges on the statements that coroners would like to make about the secret aspects of those killings. Secretary of State Chris Heaton-Harris is asking the UK Supreme Court to stop those statements. Worried they will breach the government's policy to keep the role of agents secret a policy known as neither confirm nor deny, or NCND. To the surprise of many, PSNI Chief Constable John Boucher has weighed in on the side of the coroners and families. 
He told Spotlight families deserve answers and said he's prepared to give material to new investigators without condition and without redaction. Saying that you can't investigate a crime any further because there's an agent involved, that's poppycock. Yeah. That's not right. It's like an anchor that holds mm -hmm. us back. Mm -hmm. Nobody who commits murders should be protected by the policy of NCND. Crazy. It's extraordinary, but I think I it shows that the PSNI have moved on oh, and that they have come to realise that it is important that they honour their actual legal obligations and reveal information where it can be revealed. I think the victims of the troubles deserve to know what can be known, and there is no justification whatsoever for denying them information which may have been of some significance to national security 30 years ago or 20 years ago but which now cannot, in many cases, be of any significance whatsoever. However, the government says the NCND policy and protecting state agents is fundamental to national security. Do you agree with the chief constable? Don't you, they be spending it with however they can, man. Oh, it's fundamental and, and what are these, what is she? NCND policy and protecting state agents is fundamental to national security. A matter of national security. Do you agree with the Chief Constable's comments? John is entitled to his view on this, of course he is. Uh, the Secretary of State respectfully disagrees with his position on NCND. This is now before the courts and we have to wait the court's judgment. But surely in relation to the line, nobody who commits murder should be protected by the policy of NCND, as you I can say, answer as, that. As, as I say, I'm not going to say anything which um, you know, might have any bearing on the uh, ongoing legal proceedings. Then why are you here? Are you confident that killers aren't being protected? Um, that is really not a matter on which I could comment. You know that. And that means... <laughs> That's, that, that says it all, buddy. It's really a security matter. I can't comment on that. The government is putting its faith in the new Independent Commission for Reconciliation and Information Recovery, led by retired judge Sir Declan Morgan. What would you say to the families who feel those... I feel like when, they, when people up at this level of, of, <laughs> of government say no comment, you're guilty. Alleged state agents are being protected by the government ahead of their own loved ones, I ahead would, of the I would, I, What I would do is encourage uh, families who have lost loved ones uh, 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 or whose loved ones were seriously injured to work with a new body under the you know, distinguished leadership of Sir Declan Morgan. And the powers that the new body has are really quite extensive. You know, they have powers to compel witnesses. Uh, the Commissioner for Investigations has the full powers of a police constable. However, human rights groups like Amnesty and the CAJ are convinced the Commission has been designed to control information, particularly in cases where state collusion is alleged. This new commission is not designed to facilitate information recovery because that's what's already happening and it's being closed down. This new commission is designed to give ministers a level of control over what information will be provided to families. Ministers have given themselves a national security veto so that they can remove any information from family reports that relates to the intelligence services and um, the activities of state agents. Will ministers be able... That's crazy to veto information the commission can re she relaying it right back on up release to families that is the question that the families want answered Declan Morgan was very clear that that is not the case of course there are obligations on the commission to use the information that it to which it has access you know sensitively and properly where you know, everybody's under obligations you know not to put people in harm's way and that is common in public inquiries it's common in uh, inquests Billy Wright was jailed and murdered in prison in 1997. 
Robin Jackson died of natural causes in. Brindy say in the chat that he's responsible for 150 bodies. That's tough. 1998. The family that they chose for murder, the Kearns, wants to know the true extent of Wright and Jackson's links to the state. The cornerstone of any civilized democracy is a right to truth and justice. And all the families have been denied that. We think there should be a collective inquiry, public inquiry, into all our cases and give us the answers once and for all so we can join the rest of society in moving forward. Lawrence Maguire was jailed in 1994 for five murders and later released under the Good Friday Agreement. After his interview was broadcast in 2019, a court ordered the BBC to hand the recording to a police investigation. Oh, wow. In April, it emerged that Maguire is to be prosecuted for conspiracy to murder the Cairns family. Oh, he is the only UVF member linked to that plot to face charges. They didn't subpoena the court, the, 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 the documentary? Just going down. TLO, leave a like, comment, man. This is, there's so much stuff going on over there. Like, I feel like I need to just start from the beginning and just, so, I, so everything is understandable. 